Welcome to our podcast. Yes, this is so exciting. We are Igudasman and Superman. Uh, well, actually, Jew, technically. Anyway, uh, so, Super Jew. Yeah, so this is what we do from now on until in 20 minutes, half an hour. I don't know. It just depends on how many questions you ask. How to fail and succeed. Exactly. And we have been failing a lot. And one of the things that leads to failure is when you Success. can't. That's true. Yes. Success is the key to failure. Yeah. And failure is the key to success. Anyway, should we, should we tell them a little bit about ourselves? I mean, some of, I mean, most of them who are watching right now know what we do, but maybe some people don't. What would you like to tell them about us? I would like to tell you that I love you. Well, I love him. Mm. So that means we're all in it together right exactly well, well <laughs> anyway we we are igoris manju and what we do is we combine music and humor but that's not the only things we do we also have uh, managed to fail at many many different things and succeeded in some we we write a lot of music we we love to produce our own shows and uh, i don't know what else is there to say we 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 make movies sometimes we we Act. We try and do this podcast. We, we tr yeah, and fail. Um, and we have also a wonderful little team with us um, who you can see right there, sitting there, which, you know, there's the... The, the, the three the amigos. The beauty and the beasts, I think, maybe. <laughs> the beauty and the beasts. Yeah. Plural. Guess which one is the beauty. Send your comments. <laughs> there's Yasha holding his hand up, exactly. Mariana and Alex. Alex reminds me of a mosquito who drives a Ferrari, Ferrari. Yeah. wearing sunglasses. Yes. Yeah. So if you like the mosquito wearing sunglasses, that's Alex. So um, what is actually your worst ever fail, Alexei? My worst ever fail. There are so many fails. The thing is, I mean, what, what, we, like, what we love to do is to celebrate our fails. So, so the more the the worse the fail is, the more I like to celebrate it in many ways. So it's really really difficult for me to separate what is a failure and what is a su success mm. in in some ways. How about this? When was a fail that would be considered by most as a fail? Again, I mean, our, our shows are basically big mistakes, big, uh, full full of failures full of and f full of mistakes. I think one of the earliest failures is maybe when when we were trying to play. My my sonata, my first sonata, which which uh, was uh, titled the Bastard Sonata, actually uh, dedicated to you. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing. Funny enough. how I inherited that one. Yes, it's for violin and piano, and it was kind of crazy. We were kids at the time. We were like 14, 15 years old, something. Fifteen, like maybe. And this is actually, I believe, the only time that we managed to drink beforehand before the performance because we were. Well, well, we were backstage at the British Music Information Center. Oh, and wow. There happened to be loads of bottles of wine backstage for the reception afterwards. And I think we were one of the last people playing. And we saw these wine bottles. We said, hello. Hello. Let's open a bit of Chablis. <laughs> so we did. And then we went on stage quite inebriated and intoxicated. So there's a place in his piece where we're supposed to improvise quite madly. And we did a crazy improvisation, which must have shocked everyone, even though it's the home of modern music. And then I played this um button, 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 button well, thing. Well, first, first of all, in that in that improvisation, I managed to break about twenty horse hairs from my bow, uh, something like that. Uh, so my bow looked like it, you know a tsunami came into our sphere. Uh, Ask Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Sophia. And uh, then he just, I was just playing away, button, 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 mm. button, and I just he didn't just come did in. not come in. And he I, completely I, messed up his I, own piece. I just looked at him and he just kept on playing, button, uh, button, 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 button. And I just button, waited button, button, for him to come in. And I looked at him and he looked at me and it just went on for a while. Uh, yeah, you, you had something to say about that. I think we have the first question from Michael. He asked, if you make comedy, isn't every failure on stage just a chance to get another laugh? 
the are the failures on stage just a chance to get another laugh? Yes, I want to say yes, but no. Wow, that's wow. incredibly <laughs> concise. That's just deep. I mean, forget <laughs> Lao Tse or Buddha or you know Socrates. Mm, mm, mm. No, I mean it, it, it. We it's actually why I say yes and no because we love failing and therefore getting a laugh. So yes, it's it's without a doubt that's part of the failing is to get a laugh. But on the other hand, we actually never try to be funny on stage, and I think. This is one for, for us. This is one of the keys to comedy, to any great comedian or, or, or to what we do. We never, ever, ever try to be funny. And that's not a joke. That is. <laughs> no, no it's, it's, it really is. We, we, because we, first of all, we take comedy and humor very seriously. But also, the moment you try to be funny on stage, it's embarrassing. It's just not, not cool. It's not, not funny. So we try, we, we put, ourselves into these impossible horrible situations and the comedy is, is really us trying to get out of this madness so like like we did in, in during the 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 bastard sonata which incidentally actually you can even buy apparently on universal edition and um and play yourself and it, yeah it was uh, it was still memorable but in a way even though it was a failure, I don't think the audience noticed. Probably. Well, how could they? It was a world premiere. And with all the madness that happened before. I mean, I think that's what the thing is. Uh, if if you do fail, if you do fall over, it's, it's how you pick yourself up. I mean, it sounds cliche, but it's true. Uh, it's about failing better. It's about finding ways to benefit from it. Hmm. And um, in our case, if we fail, we try to make it look like it's not a failure. So people are never sure. That's the wonderful thing about what we do is that if we make a mistake, people think it's part of the show. So we have a lucky uh, medium in that sense. But I think one can apply that generally to life. I, I think especially in music, but I think in all, uh, most fields of life, unless it's brain surgery, it's not brain surgery. <laughs> Again, forget Plato, forget Descartes, forget Immanuel Kant. Just listen to this guy. No. It's like philosophy on a if you stratosphere. If right. you screw up something, you play a wrong note, or you you forget something on stage. Who cares? No, literally, who except for your mother cares? Um, and and even she doesn't really care. I mean, she. I think I need a buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How do you manage to keep the nerves down? How do I manage to keep the nerves That's down? That's a great question. We're going to talk about that later. The stage fear is something that affects, well, most of us, let's say, hmm. if not all of us at some point. And um, going on stage is not the easiest thing to do. Speaking in public is not something that's easy to do. And uh, we're going to get to that, whoever asked that brilliant question. Uh, and even though we're going to get to just a little hint of what's going to come later, because th this episode is actually about this, um, a little hint towards it is what I just said. What we do is not brain surgery. So we have to remember that it is not as important as we think it is. Right. That, and the moment you really, truly internalize it, that what you're doing is playing. It's a game. That's already the first step. But anyway, um, let's talk about failures a little bit. I mean, actually, we'd love, love to know from you guys. Uh, just write in the comments, what's your most worst... epic fail? Yeah, what's your worst fail? And, and we will gladly talk about it. You can be anonymous or we will proudly shout who you are. I think it's very important to be proud of one's failures. Um, Michael Jordan, he said, and I quote, uh, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over again in my life, and this is why I succeed. And that's coming from arguably the world's greatest ever basketball player. Anyway, shall we watch some fails, perhaps? Let's um, watch some well, fails. By the way, of course, this is our first live stream. So if this fails... <laughs> Screws up, excuse us. We're, we're doing this for the first time. So 
Let's see if you can hear what we're watching. That'll be very exciting. Here we go. Here's the first video. Hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Yes. Oh, no. Keep the pages up. Yeah. No, not that page. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's no, 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 it's that one. No, oh. no, it's that one. Yeah. 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 Well, this is the problem uh, that classical musicians face a lot, which is we have to play from sheet music. I mean, actors don't. Well, not, 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 not all the music is that bad. You mean sheet music? Oh, sorry, sheet. I thought you said something else. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so what yeah. was that about? Not trying to be funny. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, so um, yeah, let's see what. Here's other... another one. That's oh, another sheet. Two music very program. professional people, oh. Lars Vogt and Christian Tetzler. Tetzler. By the way, I thought those kids managed very well. Yeah, I thought they did very, very well. They... I thought that they kept their cool, they kept their calm. Talking and... about being nervous. By the way. When something like that happens on stage, you will notice that the audience will suddenly be much more engaged. And actually, they'll be even more happy that you failed and give you even more applause at the end. So therefore, really don't be afraid to fail because your failure will be applauded to. In are you saying that audiences are sadists? They love to they... see us screw up and fail and uh, then they'll give us applause for that. Anyway, let's have a look at this one. Oh, 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 music fell on the floor. But look at the speed. I'm just going over. And look at her. Kudos to her. Yeah, just, just coming up up. calmly. It's beautiful. It's like a football match. This is amazing. Oh, this is choreographed. I don't think this is this is real. I think this was planned just to get our On attention. the other hand, this piece, don't you think? He should know it for memory. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, these guys at this, this level, they should. I mean, sh shame on Tesla and Volk, really. Yeah, it's... Um, uh, well, Volk, and he may know it for memory, actually. Oh, well, my well, God! Well, Look now he should know it for memory. Now he's thinking, <laughs> now he's thinking, shit, I should have known it for memory. Uh, look, and now he's dancing in the background. She's amazing. She's, she's amazing. Who is this lady? Wow. The calm, cool nerve. Did you see that? Yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. Picked up, picked... But you see, again, this is a kind of beautiful thing that I'm sure that they're going to get even more success afterwards. Let's um, look at one more. Well, we're, we're focusing, as you can see, on a particular type of failure that happens in yes. classical concerts, which is to do with sheet music. Yes, because very a lot of time music. We do have to play from paper. And as you can see, when the paper doesn't turn right, it goes all over the place. And everybody's waiting. He's ready. Oh, wait. That, that was it. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. That wasn't, that so, wasn't bad. so bad. That wasn't so bad. Why is this in this video? Top know. five page turn fail during the... I would say that's not a fail. That's not. That's... I'd say that's, that's a save. That's a cool thing. Yeah, exactly. Well, the thing is about the page turning thing. We we were inspecting these failures. And we, we did a, a program a few times we played with a wonderful violinist called Victoria Mulova. Now, um, we really wanted to make sure that we didn't have that problem uh, with the page turns. So we organized, and here we want to show you how we organize the pages very, very carefully so that nothing like that can happen. Um, you see, I'm showing her mm -hmm. where to turn the pages. I see. You see? It's, it's me turning the pages. No. Yes. <laughs> then it's her. And then it's her. Yeah. You see? It's really we, badly organized, actually. Yes, badly organized. And we knew exactly what we were doing. Yeah. It's just. Well. And of course, you guys didn't have a page turn. Yeah. That's why we asked you. You see, at this point. Oh, yeah, I remember. We yeah. asked you to turn the pages here. And I was explaining to you how to do it. And uh, very, think, very uh, kindly. Best is, um, if you stand here on the side. Well, yeah, I mean, I was actually hired to perform that day and not turn the pages. So it was a little bit of a. 
You were upset that you came to see me, right? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, those ladies came to see me, you know, after giving their money to me. Oh, incidentally, those ladies at the front, you see all the gray-haired ladies? Uh, it's the same ladies as Monty Python, you know, when you see these gray-haired ladies clapping, we, we hired the same ladies to be in the concert. So that's amazing. There were like 150 at the time. Look at my face turn to me. That scene is amazing. Because with the bold scene and the way wow. you... And I did it as discreetly as possible, not getting in the way. Did you see that little look at the finger I did? Just to moisten the finger a little bit before it gets Always put to moisten the finger a little bit. Very important. Don't you think? Very hard to see something you have to get up on your chair. I'm not sure this was a very good solution. I don't know why we're showing this. This is really showing how this I mean Yeah. Uh, yeah, we were struggling here to put my car in Actually, yeah, I remember now this turns into a bit of a disaster. It's a disaster yeah. waiting to happen. Yeah, I think you put the, the music in the wrong way now. I didn't put the music in. Yeah. I did not prepare the music. You prepared the music. I did not prepare the no, music. Look, look. So you prepared the music wrong. No. Look, you dropped it. Oh my God. Oh, this, this is such a mess. No, I stopped it. Stop this. This is, this I, is, I, I don't know. I don't even know why we showed that. I don't know. Wait. That, definitely a fail from our side. But There's a fail to show it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's like a caracha, so... Uh, but by the way, incidentally, I mean, the, the, you can actually avoid all of that stuff these days by using your iPad to to to, That's you know, to, to read the music, read the music. <laughs> <laughs> or a tablet or a tablet prescribed by a doctor. Exactly. Yeah, always prescribed by a doctor. And you have wonderful programs. Actually, the program that we love to use is music. Yes, like it used to be old Zik. But yep, then they got they, rid of the old Zik, it and now it's music. Exactly. And uh, funny enough, rhymes with music. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if they thought of that. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, music is a... Is They're not a, very good at spelling. <laughs> no, terrible. No, it's really wrongly spelled. Music is a really great program where, where you can organize all of your sheet music and everything, and it works really amazing. All of your sheet music and good music. Exactly. And you, you basically, you can put in fingerings, you can put in bowings, etc., uh, and if you're playing with several people, it goes into the other parts as well. It's really clever. It's That's really... right. It's great for orchestras because all the corrections sync, sync. right away. What, yeah. What do and they you... sync about? <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have uh, page sync problems. Yes. So thank you, Music, for coming up yeah. with that solution. Good one. Um, I think there is an interesting question for, for Kinky. Yes. Oh, for me? Yes. For yes. You. Hello. Have me, you... me, hold on. I need to warm up. Me, 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 me. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm ready. Okay. Have you ever witnessed a uh, piano failing during performance? And what do you do in that case? Well, there was a marvelous fail which happened to us once mm. we were playing in America. And, um, <laughs> well, one thing that's very dangerous is on a grand piano, you have this stick which holds up the piano in a sort of like triangular way. And most of them have like two holes. Not all of them, but usually they have two holes. And it's very important that it goes in the right hole. I know that sounds... Mm. But, um, but when it's not... <laughs> When it's not, come on, guys, you know how important it is. When it's not, uh, it's very dangerous because yeah. the the amount of weight and friction rests on one very weak point. It's still funny. Go on. And um, we were actually doing our sketch. Rachmaninoff had big hands, which is uh, quite a classic. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's some classic in some way. Whatever. There's lots Check of it out. loud noise it and, and banging and wood throwing and all of this. And exactly at that moment, the stand just gave way and the whole lid went crash. Thank God there were no babies in between, in the, between piano the piano. The piano because yeah. that would have been not nice. Because 50% of the concerts, we have babies. Yes. Which we put uh, just as a kind of like... Well, it makes us more lovable. Yeah. 
it means that we people put a little oh, baby. Look, oh, cute babies. Oh, cute oh, baby. cute babies. It helps. Yeah. yeah. So that was definitely, uh, and there's nothing really you can do about that. I mean, what, what can you do about it unless you're Superman and then you can go, what? But then, so it just fell, but luckily no one got hurt. No one got hurt. Yeah. And Alexei, how do violin strings ever, or do violin strings ever snap in performances and how do you solve the problem? Well, not if you play too much thick infill strings. Smooth. <laughs> how smooth is that? Oh, yeah, in the house. Well, it's not smooth anymore because you made a big deal about it. Yeah, it's so true. Smooth. Yeah, that's that's it's yeah. terrible. Uh, you know, strings, any string can break. Uh, strangely enough, for, for quite, quite a lot of uh, years, not, none of my strings luckily broke. But when it does, it does not matter because again it's one of those failures i can guarantee you 100 percent that if a string breaks and you have to go off stage and change the string and you come back out the audience will applaud even more for you and you will have a guaranteed bigger success than if your string hadn't failed so um just a very important thing is just um, always have a set of all the four strings uh, played in so that means used strings so that you can quickly change it so you don't have to you know uh, tune it and, and and have it go down during concert i always make sure i have a set of all four strings that i that are a little bit old but still usable um to to change quickly backstage i just realized that this cup in mm. itself embodies failure because it's uh pisa i don't know if you see that in the camera pisa and there's the leaning tower of pisa and which is we, which which is failing in the sense that it's just not straight but at the same time it's winning because it's one of the most monumental buildings in the world monumental that was good yeah that was good yeah. And, and and literally people go from all over the world to see it so if this hadn't failed if the architect hadn't failed with with it leaning you know the town would not be as popular so that's another thing plus um, also italy won England failed. <laughs> no, it was one one actually. Yeah. Anyway, well done, Italy. So uh, anyway, but we wanted to chat about a few other things. We also wanted to chat about uh, fear, really. Um, you know, fear is one of the the trickiest things to overcome because well, it, I think you're particularly talking about stage stage fright, fear, right? stage, stage fright st stage fright but this can really work for anyone fear before a presentation or a meeting fear before going to school for some people fear before an important meeting with with somebody um for me the number one thing is and it really is this big psychological thing is to understand that i am not that important doesn't matter how Im important people say that i am uh i've never said you're important you didn't no <laughs> but you, you know but your mother will tell you oh my god there's some oh, maybe if you have a jewish mother uh <clears throat> sorry uh or or actually you know, so many people, a teacher may say, oh, this is important, a competition, but it is all not as important as one thinks. I think the important thing is your life and how you're living it. So the important thing is to have full enjoyment of your life. So every experience, whether it's going on stage or, or, or going for a meeting, whatever, is literally that it's an experience. And if you if, if you don't enjoy it, then you might as well not do it. it doesn't matter if you win or lose because you can't take away those seconds the winning moment is like yay i won for example in the competition but everything that leads up to it takes much longer time so i would much rather lose the competition and enjoy my time leading up to the loss then be nervous, be nervous, be nervous. Oh my God, I, I hate it. I win. Yeah, happy for one second and then be nervous again. Well, I think that's the problem that many, let's stick to performing artists because that's what we know the best, struggle with. Hmm. Because although they are winning artists in the sense that they're adored and they play well, they cannot get on stage without throwing up beforehand or being pushed on stage or having to take drugs or alcohol or beta blockers and whatever. And that's uh, that's actually very sad that a lot of people, I mean, didn't you have some crazy experience where you were like drinking yourself 
the day well, before or something? Yes, because uh, th there are many people who unfortunately rely on alcohol or on drugs, and that's a fact. Many people don't talk about it, but it, it, it should be talked about. It should be talked with... about because it's it's a normal, common problem. Um, there, there are people who drink beforehand. Henrik Schering, for example, one of the greatest violinists that lived, was a known alcoholic who, towards the end of his life as well, um, he couldn't perform that well because he was literally drunk on stage and, and other people may rely on drugs. Uh, but there are other ways to deal with it. For, I, I went through a phase where I didn't drink before the concert or not right before, but I drank the day before the performance in order for me to have a hangover so that I would feel relaxed and not caring. Uh, I, I realized, oh, when I have a hangover, I'm, I feel slightly sick and then I don't care so much about whether I fail or succeed on stage. The problem with that <laughs> you, is that you have to really balance how much you drink, because if you drink slightly too much on the night beforehand, then you just literally feel like being sick. That's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. Did you actually think about that? Did you actually try to strategize that? I kind of did. I kind of did. And it was... So you're like, oh, tomorrow I have a concert. Okay, so tonight I need to drink yeah. so that tomorrow I can be more relaxed yeah. about it. And the problem, of course, the more concerts I had, the, the, the more I was turning into an alcoholic. <laughs> Even though I wasn't drinking beforehand, I was like always drinking for the next concert. And, and I realized at one point when I was feeling really, really sick and could hardly play, well, I still played well enough, but I realized that was no solution. And then I was trying many different things. And I, I think there are solutions out there, not just our ones, but there are one of the things that I would definitely recommend generally for your life is meditation. And I know it's such a typical thing to say, oh, everybody should meditate. But literally, people tell you, hey, you should work out, you should go for a jog, or you should do a little bit of training. And people are fine with that. But you should meditate. It's like, oh, that's voodoo. That's weird. You it's, know, meditation not... doesn't have to be some painfully burdensome ordeal. Not it at all. Really can. There's a wonderful guy called Chade Meng Tan. Maybe you've heard of him because he's quite a famous guy. Mm. He used to work at Google and he was like the, the happy guy at Google. He'd sort of, you know, try to put people in a spiritual happy place. And um, he came up with this one thing called one breath a day. Now he doesn't say that's the solution or the replacement to meditation, but he, he realized a lot of people were kind of like, oh, I don't have time to meditate. I don't have five minutes in the day. I, I can't, you know, I don't, when do I have time to sit down in a lotus position? And all that? So he would just say, just do one breath a day. Everyone has time for one breath a day. And in that breath, what you're doing is you're being just conscious of the now, of the moment. You're breathing in, you're thinking in, you're saying the word in, you're in, and then you're breathing out, you're breathing out, you're thinking out, you're out, there's nothing else. You're just breathing in and out. That's it. And it's done. It takes about seven seconds, 10 seconds. And everybody has that time, you know, when you're waiting for the train or sitting on the toilet or whatever, you know. And it makes that difference, even that one. But you know what, guys? I know whoever's watching right now, you, you, you're probably just watching it on the toilet or wherever or just what let's just take that one second without feeling like a or you can feel like an idiot it's, it's fine we don't care let's take that one breath together yes, do it. Do it. come on guys did you do it i feel do so it. much better already. I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel i feel i feel a hundred times amazing. better no i really really it's just one breath just try it. One breath. What can it cost? Nothing. Five, Nothing. five euros. Five euros. You, and you can send it to this account. Yasha, do you have a bank account? No, you actually, if you're there? watching it through no. Music Traveler TV, uh, there, there is a button where you could donate. Make money. a donation. Make a donation Make, for your for, breath. For, for, for your breath. <laughs> you know, because that breath was worth five euros. At uh, least. It can uh, cost your life if you don't breathe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you don't breathe, you can. You what happens? You die. <laughs> That, that, that's actually true. That is that's, that's been proven. That's that's been proven, proven. over run, and over again. When you run out of oxygen, you, you die. You, you you die. And what's the next thing? If you run out of, you die. You you get buried on. No no. <laughs> <laughs> or burnt. Or burnt. You get burnt. Yeah. 
If you don't breathe, you get burned. Yes. No, water. You can't live without water. Yes, but That's you can also thing. can't live within water. Unless you're an amphibian or or Aquaman. Um, yeah. I was going to say a mermaid. But... Mermaid. Um, it... A mermaid is way cooler. Are yeah. there male mermaids? Yes, it's a mermaid. Yes. It's a merman. Mormon. 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 I think Mormon are male There mermaids. must be male mermaids. Are there ma No, I don't think there are male mermaids. Mermaid. 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 No, mermaid. there's mermaid. there's some they're male they're, mermaid. they're mermaid. male men. They're male they're, male men. They're male, male persons. Male people. I think now the politically correct thing is to say male persons. Yes. And I think you can't say mermaids, but you say mer servants. Mer, mer, no. Is mer, there a Mormon mailman merman? Mer, I wonder. Mer hospitality service. Just people. imagine somebody you can't believes say mermaids. That's that's implicit. Somebody correct. believes in the Mormon faith. He is a mailman and he's more, also more lives un, in, un, in the water. He's a that's, Mormon mailman merman. But does merman have? Stage has free a uh, stage fright. Do do yes. mer service industry people have stage, stage fright? fright? Actually, they I wonder. Do they do... have a penis? That that's what I wonder about. <laughs> that's a bigger question. Well, no. If they're no. Mer, if they're mermaids, probably not because it's like all no. smooth down there, right? Buzzer. <laughs> anyway, I think we were going off the subject. We really got off um, the subject. Stage fright. <laughs> but, I mean, we were talking about political correctness just now, and you mentioned the word penis. Mm. That's not very cool. Can we cut that out? Sorry, we should also no. mention vagina. <laughs> oh, penis. There you and go. Vagina. Thank you. Now we go. See, now now we it's have, politically correct. Now we have equality. It's very important. Yeah. Very important. Uh, anyway, so so stage fright. Actually, silly conversations like this can really take away the pressure. I think for us, I don't think for them. Yeah. <laughs> Humor. Literally not taking yourself too seriously, making a little joke, you know. Well, this guy Chade Mengtan said one of the most yeah. beautiful things I've ever read. Mm -hmm. Life is far too important to be taken seriously. Yes. Isn't that great? And we really live by that. And remember one thing, actually, also what Hans Zimmer said to me several times, and, and, and uh, it's really true. Playing music is playing. It's not being serious with music. The word play is in the playing. So we have it's to also be the same in several languages. Jouer is Jouer. to play. Uh, spielen. Spielen. Yeah. When user um commented, yes. please tell about your experiments with physical exercise and music. It seems you're trying to make the body more engaged, working together with music and stage. Absolutely. Well, a Good horse question. always have a horse handy. Yes. So when you have a horse, you can always just ride on a horse. By the way, no horses were harmed during this, no. just to let you know. Uh, the I think it's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, I think that the body is and should be involved in performing anyway, in making music anyway. There, there's a natural amount of body that needs to be moved. Obviously, you move your fingers, you move your arms. Mm. But I think that we need to move more. First of all, it's healthier. And I think it also helps the music. I'm not saying that you need to be like, you know, Jacqueline Dupre. But, but. What's wrong with Jacqueline <laughs> Dupre? No, she moves around a lot. Well, yeah, but that's wonderful. I love the way she plays. I but her. I have to close my eyes. When she plays. Really? No, she Is moves it? around too much. Yeah. Yeah. You just contradict. <laughs> <laughs> Life is full of contradictions. Yeah. No, I, I think uh, uh, I'm moving during playing is a very important thing to be aware of. I think if you move without any kind of in a spasmodic way and not realizing what you're doing, it can detract not just from the music, but also from the physicality. On the other hand, to be aware of your body and consciously do certain movements can be incredibly helpful. And that is indeed what we do. We we have different choreographies that we have in, in our shows, obviously, but also in the music. We both write a lot of music that is available on Universal Edition, actually, by the way. And um, a lot of them have physical instructions. Now, those are artistically interesting, but we also think that it's actually important for a musician to be able to move, to dance while playing. This is something very natural. It was something very inherent from the very beginnings of music. From from you know at the beginning there wasn't a difference. Oh, this is music. This is dance, and and you can feel that in a lot of tribes still in in Africa and other uh, you know many different countries. You have Africa is not a country. That's true. 
no anymore. Ah, there we go. Anyway, so many many different tribes. You 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 uh, you have the musician being also a dancer, a singer, and and we think that's something beautiful and something that we should come back to, uh, because we don't see the the difference in that. At the same time, you know, pushing your own body to the to the limits and seeing what one can combine with music making is just something that's incredibly fun. And and I, we believe every everybody should try it. So well, first of all, exercise that. is very good for you. I mean, yes, this, there's nobody that will contradict you in that. And where it could be used, it, maybe you don't have to do it on stage. But something that I used to do when I was younger was that I used to go for a run, and then I used to go straight to the piano, sweating and out of breath, and try to play something that was incredibly difficult, or that need or incredibly slow and needed a lot of control, just to kind of get see how much my condition could take uh well stress being out of breath and being all sweaty and 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 i think that's not a bad thing to try like so if you put yourself under more duress you put yourself more out of the comfort zone when you're gonna be in the zone where you're not comfortable you're going to be more comfortable does that make sense it's it's always pushing yourself a little bit beyond the limit uh, in 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 order to to uh, take the next step, and that's actually coming back to, to stage fright. Actually, the being physically fit is something that will definitely also help your stage fright because you know it's a combination: mental health, physical health. So the the stronger you are in every uh, single aspect, the stronger you are as, as well going out there on, on on stage. And actually, there's several books as well uh, and several things. For example, in meditation, it's not really a book, but it's an app that I love. Um, it's called um, what is it called? Um, Headspace. Headspace. Yeah, that's see? right. <laughs> he has no space in his head to remember. Absolutely. That one. Well, yeah. because I just meditate and it yeah. all goes away. Uh, actually, it's like this English bloke who talks about that, and uh, he says. Well, you know, just imagine you're just uh, chilling out. And, and the way he s says these things oh, is really, really down to earth. And it's great. He's a guy who actually went and studied meditation for many years, but he makes it very approachable. So definitely check check out that. And for example, a couple of minutes of that before going on stage, I think can potentially do wonders. And for there's a lovely book called Managing Stage Fright, a guide for musicians and music teachers. Uh, by Julie Nagel, and uh, those links and titles will be in the description, so you can look it up. Yeah, later. Maybe we we forget to say something. Well, anyway, we'll have a few things that we really uh, think are, are cool and, and could help you with stage fright. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for example, I use uh, hypnosis while sleeping. You do. Yes. You self hypnotize? No. What? During sleep. No, it's also in an app. Uh, oh, wow. on Audible, and you can download. Oh, some cool. cds and then they count from 10 you know yes. like 10 9 8, and you're sleeping then wow. and you sleep through the whole night without any interruptions and then um the guy is talking to you about your fears and everything and then because you know you so wait is some guy talking throughout the whole night yes and you <laughs> sleep hours. through that yes Oh my god. Interesting. That's that's interesting. But and I, I really, really, really like it because wow, okay. you know well good. Well whatever works for you. What, what, what's the name? Um it's there's there are a lot of different um guys doing the CDs. Okay, for well, example. You, well well you let's know add it in the description yeah, later. Maybe that's super interesting. Well check out Marianne Buslechner. She she has her own Instagram, yo in the house, so you can check her out. <laughs> Uh, Marvelous flute player that self hypnotizes. <laughs> <laughs> On this show, you find out all kinds of things. We are playing next week in Ingolstadt. Where is Ingolstadt? Look it up on Google Maps. No, it's in a place <laughs> called Germany. Yes. And uh, you could be the lucky winner of some tickets to come see us. <laughs> For that, so what we want from you is we want you to write. What, what do we want them to write? I think send in some, you know, some, some of, of your. <laughs> fail is the word. Fail. Ah, oh, fail. 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 <laughs> fail. Send, yeah. Send us some of your fails. Yeah. So if you send us just and any kind of fail of yours, we'll that pick you... the best fails. 
Yes, and 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 just say, hey, this is how I failed. I'd like two tickets to Ingolstadt. (laughs) (laughs) Never has failure been so rewarded. Exactly. Yes. Um, Yes. Sorry, Mariana. We let's get back to Mariana. She had the something. I had the name. I I had the names. Ah. Joe Dispenza. He's Jonas Spencer. Joe Dispenza. Joe Dispenza. Yeah. Dispenza. Dispenza. And this, no, anyway, go on. Just Joe and Dispenser. Ah, Joe Dispenser. <laughs> yes. Oh, is that his last name? Dispenser. Yes. yes. That's an amazing That's name. Fantastic. Not wow. Jody Spencer. Yeah, I thought I thought it was Joe. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a guy. It's a guy. Fail. Fail. So and um. Okay. Yeah, he's really famous in America doing his stuff, and right. nice. also a Patrick Lunen. Mm-hmm. A German guy. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, and again, yeah. just you know, write into Mariana. She'll, she'll, she knows it all. Um, anyway, not all, but a lot. But <laughs> she knows a lot. She knows a lot. Well, of course, we could talk about stage fright on and on, but uh, and there's plenty that we haven't covered. Yeah. Uh, but you know, maybe you guys also want to tell us things that you want to talk about because. Yeah, it would be great send to know us comments. What and, uh, what the next subjects? Because we do want to potentially go on with with this kind of like chatting to you guys and also we'd like would like to know maybe some of your how how do you deal with with uh, mental health because one of the most important things is you know not just reading books asking your friends asking your colleagues which you are you are our friends right now so we'd like to know how you deal with it because uh, everybody has their own own ways and yes own the problem is that methods. far too often in this society where we where we have so much pressure to be perfect and behave well, we're put in a position where we're ashamed to admit our failures. And I think that's terrible because uh, without failure, we wouldn't succeed. I mean, you just think of all the great inventors and scientists and even artists that if they hadn't had all their failures and rejections, I mean, JK Rowling, Mm. The writer of Harry Potter. Yes. I mean, she was famously, re- famously rejected by like 12 publishers. A lot of publishers. She just went over and over again. They all said, no, not Dr. Don't Seuss. Dr. Seuss. You know, Dr. Seuss, Green Eggs and Ham. Oh, you know, all of that stuff. He was rejected by 27 publishers. So, but, However, we were not. And we have a book called <laughs> Rette die Welt, Save the World, uh, where we also talk a lot about failures and and. It's kind of a that was just rejected by readers. Yeah, I was. We rejected. had a publisher. But <laughs> we, we, we worked the other way. The problem we is, had a publisher come to us and say, "Could you write a book called Save the World?" We said, "Yeah, sure, you'll do it." But nobody world. bought it, and then it was just rejected. No, 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 no. no. People did. Some people did buy it. Unfortunately, for the moment, it's only in German. You can get it on Amazon. Yeah, course. all other countries rejected it. <laughs> Namibia said no. Iceland said no. Sweden said no. Germany said yes. Thank you, Germany, Austria. Switzerland, we love you. We love you. We Switzerland, love you. only the German part, not the French and Italian part. Ticino, <laughs> we need to work on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Bolzano uh, in Italy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, so so uh, check out some of our German wisdoms uh, for the moment. We hope to publish it in English as well, of course. Um, but, you know, also with something, another thing we'd love to talk about is is practice, you know, because part of not failing is maybe practicing or, or working on something uh, we, we always want to chat a little bit how we do it and one of the most important things how do you do it yeah i like one of the most important things in music and way 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 too little talked about except for percussionists uh is rhythm and groove and uh, especially as a violinist and pianist i mean who, who talks about practicing or oh, i've been doing a lot of rhythm practice today uh, or groove practice today, yeah, uh, especially as a classical musician. And that's such a shame because so many of the great, great, great uh, concertos and pieces and classical music uh, uh, works rely on a certain groove uh, and are inspired by different types of music. So one of the tricks that I tend to do, that we actually tend to do, for example, when we have a part of a piece that is rhythmic and is in a blues style or Latin music style, instead of practicing with a metronome, we go on YouTube and we try to find some kind of fun rhythmic accompaniment such as this. 100. 
So you see, just imagine practicing your scales to that. <laughs> well, it's not necessarily for scales, but for example, if there is some kind of Latin rhythmic or let's say even or, Sanson or, you know, Ronda Capriciosa, which is kind of Spanishy elements or something like that, it changes everything. Or, well, if you're playing Sherazade by Ripsy Costco, the little Middle Eastern touch. Yeah. So this is a really great way of practicing. It sounds like a joke, but it's really a fantastic way of practicing. Uh, Mariana, has have you ever done that? Practice like that with kind of grooves? Of course. What I did when I was younger, I practiced or or I warmed up with bolero like 25 minutes <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean like have someone put in the cd and then play with it like oh. 25 minutes straight until the end but okay you know, but bolero, we, that was we my meant flute practice yes, we, we yeah. meant flute practice yeah oh, okay. you do realize that practice. bolero does not last 25 minutes unless you had like some i i I would oh, go over oh, and oh, over. She oh, had the extended like, version, like, the remix. No, no, version. like until I was like, you know, cool. The, until it was going on my nerves, and then I actually then I heard like, a theory, and I did that for years. Uh -huh. Like that was my warm up. I actually heard a theory that Ravel started writing Bolero when he was two years old. But you know, someone's asking, um, hmm. how do you guys handle with neg negative thinking or o overthinking? Negative thinking and overthinking. Oh my god, this is it's it's really tough. Well, it's, don't overthink it, man. <laughs> no, but I don't know how to answer that question. I don't know yes, what to do. Don't be so negative. How, how can really. I how can I answer that? I, I don't know. Oh no, maybe I don't know stuff. Can we move on to the next question? Come on, that's no, a no, serious no. question. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> not, I'm, I'm just trying to be that. Um, look, negative thinking and and overthinking is. It's a part of our life. I think one of, for me, one of the most important things, number one, is realizing one is that one is doing it. So um, being conscious of it, which is great. So when you when you ask that question, it's like step one, great. You realize that you're doing it. So you, we want to get away from, uh, uh, from that. Step two is accepting that this is this is part of you because a lot of the time said oh i'm doing this but i want to change but we don't actually understand that we want to change and to say to oneself you know what i tend to un uh, uh, overthink things but i want to change it and i love myself still kind and of, i love him and he loves me so this is an important thing because very often uh, uh, you know those negative things it's a one it, it it adds to the self hatred it's like oh no i think negatively i overthink things they said yes i do that but that's okay i will change that so that's step number 2 and um step number 3 i think uh it's conscious everyday practice just like we do physical practice mental mental practice is think a positive thought not like oh my god we have to be you know you have to change from day one no i think it's basically just think one positive thought i feel great just tell yourself it. you don't even have to believe yourself that's the the, the magic of practice um is is you if you do it every day it will become to fruition because actually us men uh, us people we can be fooled very easily even by ourselves. So if you install a kind of mental practice of thinking a few positive thoughts every day, I really truly believe that if you can constantly do it for day after day, week after week, you will start believing it and uh, and, and and you will get there. I have a concrete tip because what you're saying is absolutely right mm. and I agree and it is still something that's easier said than done because for some people, if you're in a rut, and you you you're shrouded in this kind of negative way of thinking. It's very hard to get out. I've been in that place where sure. where I only think negatively, and even though I know all this stuff, I can't get myself to that place. And so, but I think what is possible is that if you can't do it for yourself, you could do it for somebody else. And it doesn't have to be even somebody that you know. 
you can just be walking in the street and you see someone crossing the street and you can just wish that person totally random and on person something positive something good like i hope he has a good day or i hope he's healthy and just one positive thought and just by doing that mm -hmm. already that puts you in a in a in a place where you're already thinking positively at least for somebody else because sometimes you, mm -hmm. it's hard to do it for yourself yes you know yes. so yeah so that's that's uh pretty cool uh anyway look there's so many things we'd love to chat to you about uh maybe just we we wrap up with a couple of things for example we you know this some of you may have uh watched um this on music traveler tv Mu check out music traveler tv it's what is that oh my god what is that music traveler dot tv well music traveler dot com of course mctv yeah exactly uh, music traveler dot com is the website where you can remember mtv but this yeah, is mttv MT anyway music traveler dot com is of course the website where you can have uh, uh practice rooms uh, actually you can even book my room uh and and For just what? rehearse rehearse okay rehearse there or have a photo shoot or video shoot or even I had even small performances there etc so we have there are many many rooms there mttv is the it's a great music TV is a great way of streaming things and earning some money even though this stream was for free you can still donate of course there's a donate bu button and uh, you, there are many many great shows that you can see there there's a lot of our shows for example you can see on our website there's a whole corner where you can see a lot of our shows uh, streamed on Music Traveler TV and just pay a couple of euros for them. Um, and you can upload your own shows as well. And actually, we have a new show coming out called The Loser Takes It All, which fits very well to this theme. Um, and you can win some free tickets for that. Uh, so please uh, also write in uh, some of your biggest losing moments. Biggest losing moment of your life. When did you lose the most? What? have you lost let's look at someone that doesn't look like it's going to lose yeah to finish this wonderful i episode. think that's a good idea this is a young lady called anastasia turina no relation to the spanish composer turina um and uh, in this video she's nine although in real life she's five Mm. anyway so uh we're just gonna why don't we finish with watching this yeah i think we're gonna uh, watch this playing Marvel the does. balalaika and you might like her <laughs> <laughs> and actually she is going to be a guest in one of our shows uh, in dusseldorf we have a, a series of short shows called stars and freaks and she's one of the stars stars obviously we are the freaks and uh, just check out what this girl can do um, can give it to us anastasia Anyway, she's she's actually an extraordinary artist, and that's and positive. That's it's uh, it's amazing. Love the way she have... smiles when she plays. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, uh, guys, please tune in next time. Um, we'll, we're going to take some time off after our first episode to just to digest everything. Well, we're going to enjoy the summer. It's we're going to really have a little summer tough break. Tough ride. Yeah. It's been a tough ride to prepare for today. Uh, but we'd love to know from you what you would love us to talk about. Actually, the next one, we'll be back in the fall. We'll make a social media thing. The fall. <laughs> fall. <laughs> Until then, we're going to be touring in the summer. We're going to be in Italy, of course, uh, in some wonderful places. Ingolstadt, don't remember, don't remember, don't, don't remember, <laughs> don't remember, don't remember. It hip I hypnotize you, to don't remember, and now remember, don't remember, and now I remember Ingolstadt next Monday, and you can win some tickets for that as well. Um, we're going to be playing, I think, individually as well in Switzerland. I'm going to be teaching master courses, etc. And then in autumn, we will see you here again where we can chat and enjoy some madness and uh, learn how to fail in. Succeed, succeed together 
So um, again, thank you so much for a wonderful to the three sofa. amigos, the three amigos three on amigos. the sofa. I feel like we need to have some like kind of Mexican music when it's whenever it's like the three amigos. Can we can we work on that? For the yeah, next we'll one? work on it for the yeah. next one. But until then, we love you. Mwah. See you soon. Thank you, Yasha, and, Mariana, uh, Alex, the mosquito with the Ferrari. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do we have an extra extra? Extra? Do we? How do we finish? Okay, what, what, uh, outro. Outro. Out, this is the point where he starts to have yeah. speech uh, I difficulties. Just I just cut everything out and then we're just.